Please be seated. So today was one of those days where I had to make a choice of what to preach on because in fact there were a lot of things I could have chosen there in today's readings. There were the, the, the reading from John last week which we never got to which is really an important part of John. Uh, Corpus Christi was on Thursday. Uh, World Environment Day is this coming Wednesday and that can be celebrated today. And of course, and you probably missed it because you were all voting, but on Wednesday it was International Donut Day. I bet you didn't, you didn't know that. And Alice asked me yesterday, she said, what are you preaching on? And I said, International Donut Day. And she gave me one of her infamous stony stares and said, don't you dare. So I'm not. So anyway, I would love to preach on all of them, but I'm sure we want to get home before three o'clock this afternoon. So I've just chosen today's gospel reading. You'll have seen the reading from Deuteronomy was linked very closely to it again. So what's happening in this stage is Mark is moving towards, well, he's already moved to Capernaum, which is on the northern shore of the Lake of Galilee. And of course, quite a lot happens in Capernaum and around Capernaum. And what Mark has been writing about are controversies that are leading up to the rejection of Jesus. And the Pharisees are there. And the Pharisees are the ones who really protected the law. They regarded themselves as, as the keepers of the law to the absolute letter. And they were very critical. So by this stage, they were following Jesus. And it was almost like the secret service keeping a dossier on, on, on Jesus. And in chapter 2 of Mark and the beginning of chapter 3, there are five incidents where Jesus has his name written in their dossier because there are five, and they call them controversies. The first one is chapter 2, 1 to 12, where Jesus, as the Son of Man, heals a paralytic and forgives sin. And of course, the belief was that only God can forgive sin, so it's blasphemy. Wow, that gets entered into the book. The second one is from verse 13 to 17, where Jesus calls Levi and eats with sinners. And that was a no-no, you didn't do that. You only ate with your own people. Uh, you know, eating with somebody outside, uh, uh, outside the group was a no-no. Um, so he would have had his name written down there as well. But of course that was Jesus. Jesus came for the outcasts. Jesus came for the marginalized. Jesus came for the poor. So he was always doing that, always in trouble. The third one is from verse 18 to 22, where some of the disciples did not practice fasting while other people were fasting. The, the Pharisees were fasting. And of course he would have had his name written down for that as well. The fourth one is in 23 to 28, and that we read this morning, and that's where the disciples violate the Sabbath, and that the Pharisees would have seen as a no-no as well. And then the fifth one was also from this morning's reading, Mark 3, verse 1 to 6, where Jesus is healed on the Sabbath. So we can almost imagine the secret service following Jesus around and just making notes that, of course, would be kept and used against him. And of course, the, the, the really worrying thing about it is that the people who were most against him were the Pharisees. And Jesus himself was a Pharisee. So it was his own group of people who were really most against him, which really is sad. And by the way, all these incidents are reported in all three of these synoptic gospels in Matthew and Luke as well. Well, today's reading is about controversy number four and five, and it's all to do with the Sabbath. So the Sabbath in Judaism then, and still today, is the last day of the week. So for us, it's, the, it's from our Friday night to Saturday night, and is, that's what's still celebrated as the Sabbath amongst the Jewish people today. Um, so that was a day set aside for rest, and Jews mark, and still mark, that day from sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday. And we can look and see what the Bible has to tell us about it. Well, we know that right at the beginning in uh, Genesis, we know that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Well, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11 says this, 
And this is from the Ten Commandments, by the way, it's commandment number four. And when we read the commandments, we just read really the first little line of it. In Exodus, it's explained a little fuller. So certainly I would recommend have a look at Exodus chapter 20 to get that full, fuller explanation of those Ten Commandments. So remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord our God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. And then we look on to Leviticus, and Levitic Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1 to 2. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, and say to them, These are the appointed festivals of the Lord, that you shall proclaim as holy convocations by appointed festivals. And he gave a whole list of it. We're just interested in the Sabbath today. For six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no more work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord throughout your settlements. So that's where it comes from. But notice what is not said. And what is not said is a definition of work. Now, so what is work? Well, we, we regard going to work as things we do from Monday to Friday. We go to an office and we have a boss and we work diligently and at the end of the month hopefully we get paid. That we regard as work, don't we? Of course, nowadays, after COVID, it's amazing how we, how we see time nowadays. We see time as before COVID and after COVID. We hear that in discussions every day, don't we? But I know a lot of people are working at, at home. But the work actually at this stage isn't really defined. And that sort of starts to build up a little bit later. And there were very severe penalties for not obeying the laws. Listen to what it says in Numbers 15, 32 to 36. When the Israelites were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and to Aaron and to the whole congregation. They put him in custody because it was not clear what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man shall be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him outside the camp. The whole congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Wow, gathering sticks, probably to make a fire, which would have been work, or, or in order to make dinner, which would have been work, or, or. So the requirements became more and more and more stringent. So with so many rules and regulations, and even with the death penalty hanging over them, the Sabbath easily became a day of fear, a day when people were more afraid of committing an offense than worshiping the Lord and enjoying that weekly rest. Now that's sad, isn't it? The Sabbath intended as a day of rest, intended as a day of worshiping God, becomes a day of fear and a day of threat. The death penalty can be imposed. But the Sabbath was actually intended to be a blessing, not to be a burden. It was a sign that God loved his people and wanted to draw, draw them ever closer in a relationship with him. So the Sabbath should have been a delight. Listen to what Isaiah said in chapter 58, 13 to 14. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honourable, if you honour it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob from the mouth of the Lord, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So that was the early days and it was bad enough. But by the time that Jesus was born, thin things became even worse. The law had become very regulated. 
And there's at least one document, which isn't in the Bible, where, which defined work under 39 different headings. So there were 39 different headings of work, each with its own definitions. And that was an attempt to show every Israelite what is and what is not permitted on the Sabbath. Unfortunately, you can imagine, this led to a lot of hair splitting and a lot of complexity. And the result was that the main purpose of the Sabbath became lost beneath a mass of legalistic detail. Even some of the rabbis became aware of how much they were adding to really the straightforward teachings of the Old Testament. One of them said, the rules about the Sabbath are mountains hanging by a hair, for scripture is scanty and rules many. Scripture is scanty, rules many. And what was he saying? That it's not in the scripture. We as human beings have added all these rules and regulations. And the problem was much greater than the Sabbath. These extra rules and regulations had been extended to all areas of Jewish life. And we know that there were lots of them. I read a while ago somebody who actually added all the rules together, probably did a doctorate for it or something like that. And this person said that the Pharisees had developed a system of 613 laws. And he said that 365 of them were negative, you shall not, and 248 were positive, you must do the following. In addition to the 613 commands in the Old Testament, the Pharisees created over 1,500 additional fence laws, they called them. In other words, extra laws, making sure that people kept the 613 laws. Wow. I don't know. Anybody here able to remember 1,500 uh, laws or able to remember 613? I couldn't. Never mind <laughs> obeying them. I couldn't even remember them. But what did Jesus do? <coughs> Jesus replaced them with just two. And we've said the words, haven't we? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and all your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. How's that? Jesus took that whole complicated system and put it into just two. I think I can remember two. Can you remember two? Maybe, yeah, maybe we can remember two. Remembering 600, no, no, not going anywhere. So what about today? Do we observe the Sabbath? Well, I suppose some of us will remember the days where the government had laws to protect the Sabbath, uh, and things, activities to do on the Sabbath were restricted. Churches were open, but no shops except for petrol stations and cafes. So no grocery stores, no clothing stores, no anything, other stores at all. There were no sporting events, no movies, no theater. I can even remember the Grand Prix, when we used to have the Grand Prix here, across the world they had it on a Sunday, except in South Africa we had it on a Saturday, because we couldn't have sporting events on a Sunday. But we also did crazy things in those days. I can remember that, that because people couldn't go to movies on a Sunday, they said, well, okay, as long as it's after midnight, you can go to movies. And of course, as young people, we made a point of doing that just to be anti-establishment. We went to a midnight showing in the early hours of Monday morning. We must have been mad, but I suppose that's the things we do. But I can also remember going to a lovely music thing almost every Sunday night at a hotel in Oxford Road because they weren't allowed to have a theatre production. And in those days, uh, folk singing, you know, the Donovan type of music, was very, very popular. So they had folk singers coming along, but they couldn't, you could, they couldn't charge an entrance fee, but they could charge for food. So you paid for a very nice curry and rice dinner, and the show was put on for free. Makes sense, doesn't it? So there were ways of getting around it. But are we, today, everything is open. We can go shopping, we can do basically whatever we want to do. So really, it's up to you. And by being in church today, you are worshipping God. And for most of, it, most of us, it's actually a day of relaxation with family and friends, or perhaps doing some fun activity. And you know what? The more I think about it, that's actually probably closer to the original intention that God had in mind. Still having that day of relaxation 
worshipping God, but having a day of rest. So let's have a look at the readings, the two controversies. So controversy four was about the disciples violating the Sabbath. So what do we have? Jesus and his disciples are walking through a cornfield on the Sabbath day, and the disciples pluck some grains of some heads of grain to, to eat. They must have been a little bit hungry. And of course, straight away we think, oh, they were stealing the, the, the grain. But no, 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 because in those days it was regulation or tradition that uh, farmers left a part of the crop in the field for the poor to come and gather and also for travellers to be able to eat. So that wasn't a problem. The problem is that they were doing work on the Sabbath. Now, I understand. The problem was that they were harvesting. They were working. Now, I understand if you had your tractor out and you were harvesting an entire field, yeah, I can understand that as work. But just picking up a few grains along the road just because you're a little bit hungry, I wouldn't see that as work. And that's what Jesus said. So the Pharisees accused Jesus. The strict observers, they said, why are your disciples doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And what was Jesus' response? He simply referred to an incident involving David from the Old Testament, King David, where he and his companions were hungry and they entered the house of God. David ate the consecrated bread, which was reserved for the priests, and he gave some to his disciples to eat as well. And as Jesus says, God did not judge David for this act. So Jesus, in fact, was emphasizing that the Sabbath was made for humanity's benefit, not as a burden. And there were some famous words that came from that. The Sabbath was not for humankind. Sorry, wrong way around. The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Then he goes on and he declares himself as the Son of Man, asserting his authority even over the Sabbath. Wow, you can imagine that entry in the book was in red. Heresy, declaring his authority over the Sabbath. Only God can do that. So what do we take away from that? Well, compassion and understanding. That's what we take away. And that's what Jesus was all about. Compassion and understanding. His disciples were hungry. They helped themselves, which was perfectly legal. What's wrong with that? The last one. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. So here we have Jesus entering a synagogue, a place of worship and teaching on the Sabbath, and there he encounters a man with a crippled hand, with a withered, withered hand. Well, the religious leaders are closely watching Jesus, looking out, finding the fault in him. Their motive, of course, is to accuse him of breaking the Sabbath laws by healing on the day. But Jesus, before he does that, he knows this, he knows what's going on, he sees them. So he addresses, so he sees them and he says, uh, well, this is an important question. Is it lawful to do good or harm on the Sabbath? Is it lawful to save a life or to kill? And they actually recognize that Jesus is doing good by healing this man. That's actually good. But, well, that doesn't suit them. So they keep absolutely quiet. Despite that silence, Jesus acts with authority and with compassion. He commands the man to stretch out his hand, and as he does so, the hand straightens, and there's a miraculous healing. So, the Pharisees' reaction to that, they have just seen a miracle. The problem is the miracle was on the Sabbath. So, instead of recognizing the divine power at work, the Pharisees react negatively. They, com they conspire with the Herodians, the followers of Herod, uh, to plot against Jesus. So again, what is the message from Jesus? Compassion, healing, understanding, and that really should be the true spirit of Sabbath. So I think lots to think about the, the Sabbath, but should we leave the last word to the writer of the letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 9 to 11, and they're talking, uh, the writer is talking, I don't know who the writer is, but the writer is talking about various things, including the Sabbath. And he or she says this, so then, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God, for those who enter God's rest 
also cease from their labours as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs.